when I wake up in the morning, I, I wash my brain out. I try to combat all those negative thoughts and put something positive in, in my in my mind. Mm. And then I set up habits. Okay. I don't always feel like doing things, <laughs> especially right. being an entrepreneur. It's not about feelings. It's about how, what needs to get done. Right. So most of what you think about, 90% of what you think about, you thought about yesterday. Mm. So if you can program a habit, your brain wants to conserve energy. So if you program a habit and you're doing the exact same thing every single day, even if you don't feel like it, those successful habits will take you to that place. Even if you don't have a goal, even if you do have a goal, a lot of people say, hey, write down a goal. Your goal has nothing to do with, with um, your success without a successful habit. For sure. You need to put action to that. And then after a while, you know, just gravitational forces bring everything that you want in your life to the forefront. Okay. But consistency definitely you know consistency not talking yourself out of it educating yourself most people listen to about one book a year mm -hmm. you know if you listen to you know or read a book because I, I i'm always on a go turn your turn your your car into a university yeah you know uh -huh. so if in six months if you're listening to a to a book or whatever on your way to wherever you are mm -hmm. in six months that's equivalent to having a bachelor's degree mm -hmm. so if you're listening to that much information on a regular basis, it's it's only compounded interest that's, that's going to be obtained. And next thing you know, you'll be at a goal or be further than you would ever suspect it. So for me, it's, it's always tough. Nah, Ex sure. Expect a major uh, interruption in your life every three to four months. <laughs> Plan for it. Something yeah, yeah. that you can't control. Yeah. And, you know, deal with what you can control because, you know, we, we're not going to make it out alive. So you might as well go for it. Thank you for tuning in. It's another episode of the Cosine Conversations podcast. Uh, we're back with another great episode. Uh, first and foremost, please make sure you like, share, comment, subscribe if y'all love this, enjoy this content that we're about to produce. Uh, so we're here. We have a very special guest. Um, depending on when you watch this, you might have seen him on the Cosine Summit and Expo. Uh, but we have entrepreneur. We have a content creator. Uh, we have a uh, financial advisor, insurance agent, Marcus Igiabor of Insurance Access Forum. How are you doing today, my guy? Pretty good. Pretty good. And thank you for coming and sitting here with us today. Thanks for having me. Uh, so I kind of want to start off from like a very novice perspective, right? Because when people say insurance, the first thing we think of is somebody trying to sell us life insurance. I get it. Right. You know, well, there's nothing wrong with that. But like, that's the first thing you hear of either life insurance or, or a car insurance or homeowner's insurance. But kind of tell us where you specialize and how you even got into the insurance business. So I got into the insurance business just to kind of protect myself. When I bought okay. my first property, you know, any and everything went wrong. You know, oh, it dang. was a property that I got on foreclosure. So I thought mm -hmm. it was a really good deal. But in all actuality, it came with a lot of problems, man. Gotcha. So um, the worst thing, the final straw was raccoons in my house. Inside your house? <laughs> Inside my <laughs> house. I mean, the plumbing that went out, I could live with that. The electricity. But yeah. at that point, I, I wanted to mitigate my losses and protect my budget. And, you know, I decided to just kind of learn more about insurance to kind of okay. insulate that budget. And it just put preemptive uh, plans in place to make sure okay. that I wasn't exposed. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. So I bought my first house in foreclosure as well. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I ran into a lot of issues. Like, I think, like, a month in, my, my uh, it was a 3,700-square-foot 3, house. And, like, a month in, my AC unit went out, uh, you know, Texas, summer heat. That was crazy. Um, then we had like a lot of issues, like with like the structure, and I'm like, dang, how come I'm how like, how how did all this get missed? Yeah. You know, but um, but definitely learned a lot from that. Uh, so, what kind of insurance do you specialize in? Uh, we do anything with the word insurance in it. So, okay. you know, especially you know, getting that that model to where you just said that the AC went out, mm -hmm. the structure was. Every insurance policy is not cookie cutter. Is gotcha. it's you have to customize it per the the house, just like. Life insurance, you got to customize it per that person. So mm -hmm. homeowner's insurance, auto insurance, life insurance, you name it. It's what in our firm, we we specialize in asset protection. OK. Yeah. So. OK, so like uh, dive deeper down to that, because assets isn't just like what we think of normal, like, you know, house, car, et cetera. Like what other uh, what other protection asset protection do you all do? Your life, privacy, you okay. know, your your legacy. 
Uh, we, we specialize in will planning, estate planning, setting up trust, okay. making sure that those assets are protected and, you know, you're able to pass down that legacy without any struggle or any exposure to the public business protection. We okay. do a lot of commercial insurance as well, okay. you know, preventing you from being sued in certain, app, you know, circumstances or whatnot. A, a, a house fire in your business is a yeah. lawsuit. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. So, you know, privacy and protection is everything, you know, being anonymous, you know, these days, public records are readily available to anyone. So if you have a business, there's ways that we customize to keep your business anonymous so you can continue to run your business optimally. And then whenever, God forbid, the Lord takes you home, you know, we have a contingency plan to make sure that those plans continue to be executed based on your wishes after you leave this earth. Got you. So yeah. we've been hearing a lot about trust lately yeah. in the entrepreneurial community. Let's talk about that. Um, Previously, people would think that it's only for the, the wealthy or the rich, but you know anybody can set up a trust. So, talk to us at, at first the importance of having a trust, um, and then like how you go about setting that up. It's, it's very vital to have a trust, and it really is just information. Most people feel like just the information that they don't have access is so far away, but it's actually really attainable. So, okay. a trust is a contract set up between uh, yourself and another individual. It's not legislative law so okay. uh, the government upholds contract law okay. so uh consider a trust to be your alter ego okay sense. so a trust can have a credit score uh ein number like wow. uh yeah i know that <laughs> yeah definitely definitely so what it does is legally removes all your assets out of your name mm. into the name of, of the trust but you're still able to you know control those assets because you're the trustee. Okay. So what happens is that it gives you a contingency plan and kind of sets up strategies to also protect your business okay. and also gives you an opportunity to, to pass down asset, assets without going through what's called probate court. Okay. So probate court is basically whenever we pass away, our assets are in our name. So we're all government property. Mm -hmm. you know I mean, so we all have a social security number. So when you pass away, your assets are frozen, your bank accounts are frozen, your the deed to your home was frozen. And in order to get those assets passed down or distributed to your your uh, your heirs or your next of kin, you have to go through what's called probate court. Okay. And then they'll make a decision, the judge will make a decision how those assets will be distributed. But if you wanna bypass that whole process and keep everything private, because when you go to probate court, all of your information is in the public. It's, it's, it's public information, right, even right. that information that you want to be private. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, and all so, your business. <laughs> yeah, they're all in your business, man. So to protect yourself and insulate your family through, you know, any type of, you know, exposure to to the public, mm -hmm. it's easy to set up a trust. And you can do that with a, a financial advisor or an attorney. Okay, okay. Yeah, so. so that's when they talk about, um, what they say, own, uh, own nothing, control everything. Own nothing but control everything, <laughs> you know, definitely. The main thing is, you know, because there's a lot of haters out here, you know. Sure. Success breeds envy, so ah, definitely. you know, I think we've all experienced that in entrepreneurship in a space to where whenever you're growing at a certain uh, pace that the people who you started with, mm -hmm. they don't they don't come along with you. And, yeah. you know, there's a, a liability of exposure there Not based sure. on how they may feel about circumstances or people from a distance. So mm -hmm. in order to kind of protect yourself, you can really remove all of your assets out of your name mm -hmm. and no one will ever know that, you know, you own, own this, yeah. this, this, uh, these entities or these assets and you're protected from lawsuits and sure. it insulate you from, from any type of inside or outside attack. Now that's, that's smart. We speaking with an attorney, I think it was a uh, Ugo, Ugo law. And, um, we were talking about that cause like nowadays everybody with social media, they want to be seen. They want everybody to know what they're doing, but it's like, that's, that's, that's a liability if everybody knows what you're doing. Cause now you're easily, easy to find. Like if you say, Hey, I own this, this, and this, somebody sues you they could try to go after everything but if they don't know what you own yeah. they can't go after it so it's like social media is a good thing but it you just got to use it properly and stop trying to be like you know in front of everything and just try to do it for show and just conduct our business like how the wealthy do yeah you know, they run their business they're private about their situations they make their money and they go about their business absolutely and when you see the wealthy pass away the only way you know that they didn't have their assets protected is because they didn't have a trust mm -hmm. or they didn't have you know, any contingency plans put in place. You may know who they donated to or whatnot, right. but at that point, you know, you don't know anything. You don't know what they've owned. Mm -hmm. 
you can be affiliated with with your company, you can be associated with your company, but when it gets down to the nitty gritty and someone's actually trying to come for you or attack you, not only do you want to have your 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 ducks in a row as far as that asset protection, as far as being remaining anonymous, but you want to have the proper insurance in place to where if you do have a liability at your company, they do want to come for the company. You're not going into your pocket. You're actually looking at you know filing that insurance claim that'll provide maybe a million dollars in in legal legal expenses that'll okay. keep you focused right. on your business instead of having to drain your bank account to mitigate that loss. Mm. Now that's, that's important. Uh, what would you say is like something somebody should automatically have when they have their, when they start a business, some type of insurance they should have for their business. We don't hear about a business insurance a lot. Yeah. So I kind of yeah. want to make sure we dive into that. Uh, they, you should have a business. Uh, it's literally called uh, business owner's insurance. Okay. What does that you know, do? It's a business owner's policy. What it does is it provides the liability insurance, which is your liability to others. So okay. if I come to any one of your spaces and, or if, so like you said, social media is is huge. So you know, talking trash about somebody that can be considered slander or or liable. So that could technically hurt someone else's business. So if they decided to sue you for that for those words or those comments, you have legal protection put in place. So it's not really expensive. We're talking like under a hundred bucks a month. Okay. You know. So yeah. So I've been doing a lot of uh, uh, events at other places, and if, um, this event I have coming up, they were like, you know, you got to have some type of insurance to produce an event here. Um, I don't know if it's like a vendor policy insurance or yeah. something like that. Is that something you guys do as well? Absolutely, absolutely. We and do a lot of events-based insurance. Now. Okay, okay. Yeah. And talk to us about that. Like who actually needs those type of stuff? Because a lot of times people have no clue that they need to get like insurance policies when they're producing or hosting events in other venues. Yeah, yeah. And any type, anytime you're doing an event where you have uh, exposure to people, mm -hmm. you know, there's a liability there because anybody could – a slip and fall, anybody can hurt themselves. Someone can show up at the event and do something that is really off the books or, you know, uh, it can go south to where if there's cer certain um, things that are planned in that event that would produce income and that doesn't happen, you know, you want you, you, you don't want to be on a hook for those losses. Gotcha. So I, I think you should definitely have a good agent in place because okay. what happens is that, you know, each business is different. Right. So you want to make sure that you're getting with the right carrier, mm -hmm. the right appetite. So any event, those incidents, those instances, though, any event that that does happen, you want to make sure that you're not exposed. You don't have the wrong the wrong policy in place. You're not with the wrong company. You're not like I thought I had insurance, but right, right. they don't cover this. So yeah. you know you want to get somebody who's experienced. No, nah, it makes sense. Yeah. Or a team who's experienced. Our teamwork makes the dream work. Makes sense. Spend that couple hundred dollars instead of getting being charged thousands or something happens. Brother, I didn't see that happen. <laughs> you seen that happen? Oh man. Yeah, I didn't seen it put people out of business. I I didn't seen it bankrupt people. Dang. By just not having liability insurance in place. Mm. You know, so ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars as a new entrepreneur, something happens, you're getting started. Right. That that could sink you. That could make a big impact, you know. For sure. So for sure. Just having that peace of mind. I remember there's been a couple of times. I don't know how official it was, but there's been a couple of times I've received emails of people trying to sue me. And I'm like, uh, I just I just ignored it. I'm like, they really want to sue me, they're gonna get to me, but I just oh, ignored yeah. it. But a lot of it was based off of um uh like content creators. So like when I first started Cosign, my big thing was, you know, user generated content. So like everybody does it on the website, you'll see uh like a new release of something, right? So right. there was a specific article. You ever seen Boy Meets World? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, so that's Boy Meets World, it was Topanga. So Topanga from Boy Meets World ended up uh doing a photo shoot for this new magazine and they were just talking about like, you know, Topanga then it's Topanga now. So like we did like uh, a story just saying like, hey, do you co sign Topanga's new look? reshare like the images, but even put like the photographer's credit on there. Uh, I guess this photographer did like a search, found the photos and, you know, tried to sue us like, hey, if we didn't pay $5,000 for these photos, you know, who's going to sue us uh, for using, I guess, infringement of the work or whatever. I was like, yeah, no. Yeah, they they, they, they got to <laughs> physically serve you if, they, yeah. if they're trying to be sued. But if you have your, your assets in a trust, you can't serve a trust. Mm. You know, you that's not a person, that's your alter ego. Oh, wow. You know, so... Um, definitely having trademarks on your business. If your if your logos, if your if your uh, slogans aren't trademarks, someone could just take your business. Oh wow! You know, people don't realize that. You know, trademarking is a huge thing. Like, you know, yeah. you can 
work and, you know, have it, have an LLC, you know, individuals think that, Hey, look, I got an LLC. So right. I'm, I'm good. Protected. Well, you're, you're the guarantor. Mm -hmm. So what we teach is we, we actually structure businesses for you. We do the business formation for you. We say, Hey, let's incorporate your business in, in another state. Let's, mm -hmm. let's do it in Delaware. Let's do it in Nevada. Let's do it in Wyoming in these states, it gives you the option to remain anonymous. Okay. So we structure it. We we uh, set your your business structure up properly. So especially we work with a lot of real estate investors, a lot of real estate brokers. So um, you have your active and you have your passive income. So the hierarchy is the trust at the top. Right. The trust is at the top. You've established the trust. Now the trust owns your holding company. Okay. That's established in Delaware. So now mm -hmm. that you done took you know, your, your name legally off the documents, mm -hmm. your trust is the owner. Now the trust is the owner of the holding company in Delaware. Okay. That's a state that you can remain anonymous in. Mm -hmm. And then that holding company owns your operating company. Okay. That's the company that actually does your transactions. Okay. So now the operating company is owned by the holding company, which is owned by the trust yes. and you're the trustee and nobody knows who's on the books. Mm -hmm. Okay, so to paint yeah. that picture, so okay, so Cosign has an LLC, right? Yeah, that could be owned by an operating company, uh, a holding company. So let's say that's XYZ LLC, that'd be the holding company, yeah. and then the holding company is owned by the trust. Bingo. Okay, and the trust could be, I can name, I'm the trustee, but I can name the trust anything. You name the trust whatever you want, okay. and then you can make modifications to the trust. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a revocable trust. So that means it's two different types of trust. It's an irrevocable and revocable. Okay. So revocable trust, you can, it's like a living trust. You can make modifications to that trust anytime you want. Okay. So really it's a will based on um, the dynamics of a will, but it's a will keeps everything legally in your name. So even when you pass away, you still got to go through a probate court. That's still exposed right. to the public. So you want to make sure that when you set this trust up, you do what's called fund the trust. Mm, okay. When people say funding the trust, they don't really understand what that means. Right. All that means is that, let's say we set up that trust, let's say ABC trust, mm. um, I wanna fund this trust. So now I'm gonna go down to my bank account, mm. go down to my, local, to my bank, whoever I bank with and say, hey, look, I wanna transfer the ownership of this bank account out of my name and into the name of the trust. I'm the trustee. Mm. The banker is gonna say, do you have your trust documents? Okay. So, yeah, I sure do. You hand them those trust documents, they transfer that ownership, you no longer own that bank account anymore. Mm -hmm. And those instructions in the, in the trust, God forbid something ha happens to you, they're legally carried out. And if you have kids, you wanna make sure that those are an opportunity to, that trust also gives you an opportunity to, especially if you have smaller children, right. children that are under legal capacity, mm -hmm. it gives you an opportunity to make sure that you have guardianship you know, okay. opportunity set in place to where if something happened to you, this is who I want to take care of my child. This is how I want her college fund to go. This is how I want things to happen. So it just puts a, a um, contingency plan in place for your business mm -hmm. and for your and for your personal life. Mm -hmm. Can you make them trustees? Yeah, you can make them trustees. You can make them beneficiaries. Okay. Man. Yeah. When okay. you pass away, that trust then becomes irrevocable at that okay. point. Now you can't change it. Gotcha. So this gives you the opportunity to speak beyond the grave okay. for everything that you want to happen. And we set up trust funds with uh, IULs, Index Universal Life Insurance Policies, okay. that you know we give people the opportunity to learn how to be their own bank, create their own pensions. Okay. And also leave legacy for their kids because every kid doesn't want to go to college these days. Right, for sure. You know, entrepreneurship is is thriving. You know, it's a thriving uh, field these days. You know, it's we're we're in a creative area right now, era right now. So, at that point, you know, these funds are accessible, and you don't have to use them for college, like your basic five twenty nine plans. Five twenty nine plan is a child's college savings plan. Okay. You know, which is uh a plan that you contribute to, but it's still exposed to market risk. Yeah. When I say exposed to market risk, the money that you put into that policy grows based on the, the performance of the stock market. It's actually in the stock market. So if the market's going down, you still lose money. Okay. But whenever that child is of age, in order to use those funds, they have to use it for college. college okay. If they don't use it for college, somebody has to go to college. Go to college. You know what I mean? So it'd be better to have a, a index strategy in place 
that doesn't give, doesn't put your money in the stock market, but it mirrors the stock market. Got gotcha. you. Right? So you give up a little bit of the upside for, you know, a guaranteed return. So if the market goes up to 25%, there's a cap of like 12%. Okay. So the market goes down to negative 25%. There's a floor of zero. So you never lose any okay. money. You never lose, but you don't win as big. Ne it's low risk. Right. But it's guaranteed. Right. And then when that, you know that money is going to be there, and you can use those percentages to bank on to know exactly how much is going to be there. And that's one thing about entrepreneurship. You know, we're hustling, we're grinding, we're focused, but let's, you know, protect yourself for 10 years later right. let's protect yourself for 10 for 20 years later let's get some lock in some guarantees because you know the the very nature of entrepreneurship is is variable you, you just never know when things could happen you know up it up and down every single yeah. day so you know whatever um i think that everyone should sit down with a financial advisor that's one sure. thing that i I hear a lot of my clients say, man, I don't even know where to find a financial Not advisor sure. to sit down. Or yeah. whenever I sit down with a financial advisor, they're really, really pushy. They're trying to get me to put my money here. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's all about it's all about um, uh, risk tolerance. It's all about what's going on within your life. It's all about, you know, you and I, we, we may see money differently because how your parents viewed money, how you were raised in the household, what they went through in that economy when they were younger. So their relationship could be totally different. So it, it, it's a it's not a cookie cutter type of deal either, you know? Gotcha. So. No, that makes sense. And uh, I know on the summit, we're actually talking about like leveraging, you know, new industries into, you know, into your wealth plan, right? Yeah. So I hear a lot about like how people use insurance to build wealth as well. Kind of talk to us about that. Cause I'm not gonna lie, that's a little confusing. I'm like, how can you use like life insurance and other stuff to build wealth while you're still alive? Yeah, right? yeah, so. absolutely. Most people associate life insurance with passing away. You can only sure. use it when you die, you know. And and that's and that's um, just a, a primitive state of mind because there's a lot of information that goes behind life insurance. There's several different policies that need to be customized for your circumstance. So, uh, life insurance. Uh, kind of consists of two parts. There's term life insurance, and then there's whole life insurance. Okay. Now, term life insurance is basically exactly the nature of the very word. It's established in terms, 10-year, okay. 20-year, 30-year, you know? So, and it's historically a little bit less expensive than, than whole life insurance policies. Okay. So, and is, there's, some, there's a lot of value add with, with term life insurance. So, let's say a homeowner purchases a house and they're like, okay, God forbid I pass away and I have this 30 year mortgage. Right. I have this term life insurance policy that'll pay my mortgage and take care of my kids, take right. care of my family and things like that. But whole life insurance is for your entire life. Mm -hmm. And the sooner you get it, the better, because you still have to apply for these policies. Right. You're just not automatically given these policies because it's best based on your health, your lifestyle and your age, for sure. you know? So whole life insurance, whole life insurance is put in place for the rest of your life, you know? So uh, when we talk about, you know, borrowing money and building wealth and utilizing whole life insurance, whole life insurance has several different vehicles. Okay. We use the index universal life insurance strategy. Whole life, all whole life insurance policies do grow a cash value, mm -hmm. but the strategies that we use with index universal life insurance policies, which is also a whole life insurance policy, I get that all the time. So what's the difference between a whole life policy and the IUL? Yeah. I just say, well, IUL, Index Universal Life Insurance Policy, is a form of a whole life okay. insurance policy. Gotcha. Right? So, but even if you do get an IUL, the main thing is having the right agent structure it, an agent knowing what he's doing to structure it the right way. So this is how we utilize a whole life, uh, 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 IUL. So we establish it understanding that you're trying to max accumulate cash within this policy, right? So we establish a minimum death benefit, which is, you know, what will pay out when you pass away. It's called a face amount. So in this example, we'll just say we want to, and then we save, and then we establish a, a savings amount. Okay. So in this example, we'll say, hey, we want to save about a thousand bucks a month, right? So I'm going to look at, your age, your health, you know, your lifestyle, and then evaluate an application to be processed by underwriting. So that cost of insurance may be a hundred bucks a month for 
let's just say $200,000 worth of life insurance. Uh -huh. But I want to save a thousand bucks a month. So now that I've set up that life insurance policy, that hundred bucks, anything in excess over that hundred dollars goes into that cash value account. Uh -huh. So now that thousand bucks, 900 of that thousand dollars is going to that index fund. Okay. That cash value fund. Remember, it's mirroring the index. Right. It's not actually inside right, right. of the. So when it's going up, you know, there's a cap rate. We win. And when it goes down, you still good. We, we still good. So the benefit of that, let's just say we done put in about $20,000 into our life insurance policy over the course of time. And it's now grown to 50K because remember, it's performing based off the index. Right. So. We bought two hundred thousand dollars worth of life insurance. That's what a hundred bucks pays right. buys. So now that two hundred thousand, that two hundred thousand dollars base amount, that death benefit is now two fifty. Mm. So that that two fifty, that fifty, that additional fifty thousand dollars comes from that that growth of that cash value, right. right? So what we're doing, we're actually borrowing from the collateral of our death benefit. Mm. So we're actually not borrowing from our our policy, gotcha. we're borrowing from the in, from the insurance company's general fund. Gotcha. So what happens is like, let's just say I want to buy a, I want to do a, a I want to buy a car. Mm -hmm. Say I want to buy a car, that car is 30 grand, right? I tell the insurance company, hey, I want to buy, I need 30 grand for my, my insurance policy. They say, okay, how long, when do you want to pay it back? Five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 yeah. years, it's up to you. Okay. So you set the terms. So they take the they take the 30 grand and give it to you. They don't take it from your policy. Mm -hmm. They give it to you, but they co they use that 30 grand within that $50,000 balance gotcha. as collateral, right? As if if you don't pay it back, it's going to come off your death benefit. Right, right, right. So what happens is that when we buy a car, we've all financed a car, right? No. You buy a car, we take that $30,000 cash, buy that car, and that car we get so when we buy a car, we buy the money and we buy the the car right. because we buy the interest rate on that money. Sure. So we have the car, we have the title, and when we pay that back in five years, let's just say because our money is still growing in that in that, in our IUL, mm -hmm. at the end of that that five years, let's say it took us five years to pay that back, we may have a balance of three hundred thousand dollars in that account now, okay. you know, because it never stopped growing as if you never took that money out. Gotcha, gotcha. So at that point, you know. We're being our own bank at that point. So let's say that's a house, yeah. you know, and that house is 300K. You know, you took out 300K, you bought that property, you have the deed, and now you're paying the mortgage to your policy if you want to pay it back or not. You know what I mean? So you could do that with properties. If you want to flip a property, you can take that money and put it back into your property. Yeah. And you can have more than one IUL, more than one index universal life insurance policy. Okay. Because once you decide that amount of savings, like that $1,000 per month, you decided that at that particular age. Mm -hmm. So whenever you, you know, decide, hey, look, I can contribute more based on the investments that I've done, you can actually get another policy. But as, you know, let's say it's three years later, mm -hmm. it's predicated on your age three years later. So I have clients with multiple policies. I personally have multiple policies. Okay. So what we do is we let these policies be the, the trust is the beneficiary of these policies. So God forbid anything happens to me and I have properties that are in my real estate portfolio that still have loans on them. Those, those life insurance policies will pay off those properties and my okay. heirs get my, my real estate portfolio scot-free. Okay, no, that's yeah. amazing. That's amazing. So, so I know you also um, recruit, try to be, get people into the insurance industry, industry, right? Yeah. So, yeah, kind of talk to us about like who's that a good fit for, right? So, like, let's say somebody's an entrepreneur, like, let's say somebody's going looking for a career change, or like, who would make a good fit to become, you know, an insurance agent, a financial advisor, or join your firm? Anyone. It, it just depends on your, you know, your determination. I think that everyone has a connection to people. So any business I, I like to say is a people business. So okay. I think that education and understanding how this business applies to your life, utilizing that as a story to, to talk to individuals and say, hey, look, this could be an opportunity that, you know, they can, you can reach people in your demographic that I possibly couldn't reach, gotcha. you know, and it's a really good career field, you know, it gives you an opportunity to earn residual income, 
You know, uh, insurance is one of the most uh, lucrative financial industries in the world. One of the top three, technology, real estate, and then financial services. So when you say residual, is it like um, insurance agent gets paid like while the policy gets paid or like what's the business model? Yeah, you get paid while the policy is being paid. Okay. You know, so uh, over the course of so many years, depending on what insurance policy you put in place, you get renewals. So once that policy renews, people, you know, are using saving strategies, you know, with these IULs and things like that. So they're not going to get away from their strategies of what they want to get into. So, you know, when we're making money and being our own bank, it's a twofold. Your client gets to win. And every time that that um, that renewal hits, you're not getting paid from your client. You're getting paid from your contract from the insurance company, okay. you know, as an agent. So it has nothing to do with, you know, taking anything from right. a client. It's a win-win circumstance. I get a lot. I get from a lot of different clients and prospects. So how do you get paid? <laughs> I was like, I got a contract. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry about Let's, I got let's worry about doing. you. Yeah, 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 definitely. So, and it's, it's longevity in the business. And, and it, you know, these things have been around for, especially these strategies, they've been around for, for over a hundred years. Mm. You know, it's just that uh, our generation hadn't been able to get to it. And for me, I'm kind of new on the social media scene yeah, in yeah. a sense. So, um, I started off in property casualty insurance, just, you know, your old school, basically shaking hands and building relationships and things like that. So in 2020, when I first heard about Instagram, <laughs> I was like, that's crazy right there. Yeah, 2020, when you learned about Instagram, I didn't even know what it was. You know, I hired yeah. a coach, you know, because I'm always trying to advance. So she said, you may want to get a social media platform. I didn't understand the concept. I said yeah. social media. She's like, yeah, like a Facebook or I couldn't correlate the two. Yeah. So I was like, OK. And then I was like, you mean you can reach out to as many people as you want for free? Yeah. Like they don't, you know. <laughs> so I'm Turned sure. From there. Right. At yeah. that point, I was like, oh, yeah, it's on now. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, from that standpoint, man, it's, it's we, we focus on education. It's not about sales because you're dealing with people's lives. Right. You know, we're, we're talking about the transference. The transference of ideas is not to me. I don't consider myself in a in a sales space as a salesman, I consider myself as an educator. Right. I'm very passionate about this. I know how this impacts people's lives. Mm -hmm. In dealing with so many clients, we have over 10,000 clients. So dealing with so many clients, I, I see people die right. on a regular basis, every week, every two weeks, every month. It, it really happens. I see the impact of someone who just purchased a house mm -hmm. and you didn't think they were going to kick the bucket because they're only 24, yeah. newly married couple. And the wife is hanging around like, I don't know how I'm going to take care of this house. I didn't have anything in place. Yeah. Matter of fact, I wasn't on the deed. I, I can't even keep this house. I can't get into his bank accounts and things like that. So, you know, definitely establishing that trust is in place. But, you know, a career in insurance is, is I feel like I'll be a lifetime insurance broker. Mm. That's amazing. Uh, I mean, it's sad to see like that people, you know, have to deal with certain, certain circumstances like that and not be prepared, but, you know, having you around that helps. Um, but, you know, your journey has been, you know, uh, on an uphill battle. Like, you have a lot of clients, you're doing great. But it always hasn't been that way, right? So yeah, yeah. social media makes everything look like it's all wins, but, you know, we all lose, right? So we have this section called Cosign Confessions, and, you know, kind of want to end with this. But on this Cosign Confessions, it's kind of like it's an opportunity for entrepreneurs and creatives to talk about a point in their life to where, you know, they confess – you know, failures, losses, and how they overcame it, um, how they dealt with the adversity. Just, just so people know that they're not alone. Like somebody may be out here on like a losing streak right now and don't know how to keep going. So this is an opportunity to kind of like talk to us about, you know, a situation you had that you overcame in business uh, that, you know, you could share with somebody. Yeah. I mean, I, I fail I fail more than I win. That's the, that's the thing about it. I fail more than I win. So I would say um, – I would say about 15 years ago, I was in a space to where I, I succumbed to my own bad habits. You know what I mean? Like we know when we're supposed to be, you know, doing things the right yeah. way, you know? And I would say almost 15 years, but a little longer than that, probably like eight, almost 18 years ago when I first started, you know, I succumbed to my own bad habits. You know, I lost everything. I, I, <laughs> I wasn't physically responsible. I wasn't financially responsible. Yeah. I had my car repoed. Yeah. You know, I was, uh, 
you know, basically living on somebody else's couch, trying to get my mind right and mm -hmm. trying to get focused. So uh, education, you know, you got to constantly be a student. So for me, at that point, I, I, I felt like I hit rock bottom. But we always speculate that there's something inside us to be great, right. even though we're in that space to where we're not as productive as we should be. Mm -hmm. But I started listening to YouTube. I think that was the only type of, you know, right. uh, internet platform that, that yeah. I would glean information <laughs> from. So I started listening to affirmations because we're net, we're, we're traditionally, we're, we're programmed to be negative. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you wake up in the morning, when I wake up in the morning, I, I wash my brain out. I try to combat all those negative thoughts and put something positive in, in, my, in my mind. Mm -hmm. And then I set up habits. Okay. I don't always feel like doing things, <laughs> especially right. being an entrepreneur. It's not about feelings. It's about how, what needs to get done. Right. So most of what you think about, 90% of what you think about, you thought about yesterday. Mm -hmm. So if you can program a habit, your brain wants to conserve energy. So if you program a habit and you're doing the exact same thing every single day, even if you don't feel like it, mm -hmm. those successful habits will take you to that place. Even if you don't have a goal, mm -hmm. even if you do have a goal, a lot of people say, hey, write down a goal. Your goal has nothing to do with, with um, your success without a successful habit. For sure. You need to put action to that. And then after a while, you know, just gravitational forces bring everything that you want in your life to the forefront. Right. But consistency. Definitely. You know, consistency, not talking yourself out of it, educating yourself. Most people listen to about one book a year. Mm -hmm. You know, if you listen to, you know, or read a book, because I, I, I'm always on a go, turn your turn your, your car into a university. Yeah. You know? Uh -huh. So if in six months, if you're listening to a, to a book or whatever on your way to wherever you are, mm -hmm. in six months, that's equivalent to having a bachelor's degree. Mm -hmm. So if you're listening to that much information, on a regular basis, it's it's only compounded interest that's, that's going to be obtained, and next thing you know, you'll be at a goal or be further than you would ever suspect it. So for me, it's it's always tough. Nah, for Ex sure. Expect a major uh, interruption in your life every three to four months. <laughs> Plan for it. Something yeah, yeah. that you can't control, yeah. and you know, deal with what you can control because you know we we're not going to make it out alive. So you might as well go for it. Nah, facts. Might as well only get one life. So yeah, only get one life. Might as well go hard, man. That's amazing, bro. Action, execution, consistency. That'll definitely help get you started. Uh, man, thanks for sitting with us. Before we get out of here, please get the people, you know, where they can find you at Instagram, social, website, all that good stuff. Yeah, absolutely. You could definitely tap in with me at Marcus Igiabor. That's all my handles on social media. M-A-R-C-U-S-E-G-I-E-B as in Bravo O R. And, you know, we do anything from trust planning, estate planning, uh, setting up be our own bank strategies, homeowners insurance, auto insurance, business insurance, anything with the word insurance in it. You know, we have a, a fully staffed team of agents and trained professionals and advisors and attorneys that are ready to help you and assist you. Tap in, get to work, get your businesses protected. Uh, thank you always for tuning in to the Cosign Conversations podcast. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And until next time, y'all take it easy. We'll see y'all later.